We're in a new chapter about geometry and volume. This is 11.1, and we're going to talk about polygons. A polygon is a closed plane figure formed by three or more line segments that meet at points called vertices. We learned about those originally in fourth grade math chapter 10, but I'll link that in this description if you need it. So polygons are named by the number of sides and angles they have. So this is an open figure because we can see it's open. This is a closed figure. A triangle has three angles. It also has three sides, one, two, three. And a quadrilateral has four sides and four angles. Poly is a prefix meaning many. Gon is a suffix meaning a specific number of angles and sides. So if we have a polygon, we have shapes with a specific number of angles and sides. And prefixes can help us identify polygons. Penta is a prefix meaning five, hexa for six, hepta for seven, octa for eight, nana for nine, and deca for ten. So polygons have sides, and they have vertices. That's the plural of vertex. You would have one vertex, and this quadrilateral has four vertices. One, two, three, four. It's also got four right angles on the inside. So here we have a chart with the polygon name, how many sides it has, how many angles it has, and how many vertices it has. Triangle has three sides, three angles, three vertices. A quadrilateral has four sides, four angles, four vertices. A pentagon has five sides, five angles, and five vertices. And a hexagon has six sides, six angles, and six vertices. A triangle is any polygon that has three sides, angles, or vertices. And a quadrilateral, it doesn't have to look like a square or a rectangle. It's any polygon that has four sides, angles, and vertices. And that doesn't look like the type of pentagon we're used to seeing, but that is a pentagon. It's got one, two, three, four, five sides. And it's got five angles and five vertices. And any polygon that has six sides, six angles, and six vertices is a hexagon. And any polygon that has seven sides, seven angles, and seven vertices is a heptagon. And any polygon that has eight sides, eight angles, eight vertices is an octagon. Same with a nonagon that's got nine, or a decagon that has ten. So a polygon will have the same amount of sides, angles, and vertices. If we know a polygon has six sides, then we know it has six angles and six vertices. And if a polygon has six angles, then we know it has six sides and six vertices. The number of its sides will be the same number of its angles and vertices. When line segments have the same length or when angles have the same measure, they are congruent. And two polygons are congruent when they have the same size and shape. They're congruent to each other. There are regular polygons and irregular polygons. All the sides and all the angles of a regular polygon are congruent. So for this triangle, this side is the same length as this side that is the same length as this side. All three sides are the same length. They're congruent to each other. This quadrilateral, that's a square, and all four sides are the same length. The sides and angles are congruent. Same with this pentagon. Each side of this pentagon is the same length. And with the hexagon with six sides, heptagon with seven, octagon with eight, nonagon with nine, and tecagon with ten. Now, irregular polygons have sides of different lengths and angles of different measures. Here's a triangle, and it's got a short side, a medium side, and a long side. This quadrilateral has different length sides. So does this pentagon. Here's two short sides, two long sides, and a real short side. 
Look at this hexagon. These two sides are short. These two sides are long. And look at this heptagon. It looks like every single line segment is a different length. And this octagon has a long side and some short sides. And this nonagon has different length sides. And so does this decagon. It's got a real long side down here, but then it's got little short lines up over here. So these are irregular polygons because they have sides of different lengths and angles of different measures. These are regular polygons because each of their sides are equal to each other. They're all congruent to each other and their angles. A regular pentagon will always look like this because it has five sides that are equal length. So this pentagon is a regular polygon. This side is eight centimeters and this side and this side and this side and this side. Every single side is eight centimeters. And all the inside interior angles are 108 degrees. It's a regular polygon. Now this pentagon is an irregular polygon. It's an irregular pentagon because the sides are not all the same length. This one's four centimeters, this one's seven, this one's three, and the inside interior measures are all different. Here this one is 105 degrees, this one's 120 degrees, this one's 90 degrees. And irregular polygons are also called non-regular polygons. That prefix IR means not. So it's not regular, irregular. These little lines are called tick marks. And the little lines called tick marks are used to show congruent segments. So if you see one tick mark, that means it's congruent to another segment that has that one tick mark. If you see two tick marks, then it means these two line segments are congruent to each other. And then this one with one tick mark is congruent to this one. And if we had a side with three tick marks, it would be congruent to another side with three tick marks and so on. We could do four, five. It depends on how many sides there are. A little curved line, these little curved lines, these are called arc marks and they're used to show which of the angles are congruent. So this is a very small angle compared to these, and these two are the same angle measure. This triangle has three equal sides, so it has three equal interior angles, and so they have the little arc. And the tick marks and arc marks are called congruence marks because they show which parts of the polygon are congruent. And you can do an equal sign with the little curvy tilde on top of it. That's the symbol for congruent. The sum of the interior angle measures of any triangle is 180 degrees. It doesn't matter what the triangle looks like. If you measured the inside angles, no matter what shape the triangle was, the interior angle measures would be 180 degrees and the sum of the interior angle measures of any quadrilateral is 360 degrees. Doesn't matter what shape it is, if it's a quadrilateral, the interior angle measures are going to equal 360 degrees, and the sum of the interior angle measure of any pentagon is 540 degrees. If you were to add them all up, it would be 540 degrees, and it doesn't matter what type of pentagon it is. As the number of sides increases, the measure of the angles increase. Triangle has three sides, and the interior angles will measure 180 degrees. When we add another side, and now we have four sides, now the interior angle measures are 360 degrees. And if we add another side to be five sides, now the interior angle measures are 540 degrees. Do you see how every time we add a side, the inside measures? increase. So as you're working with polygons, be very, very careful that you count how many sides there are. You might have to put a little dot or something to count the sides to make sure, okay? You don't want to call a hexagon an octagon or vice versa. You want to make sure you actually count how many sides, angles, or vertices it has.
In our next lesson, 11.2, we're going to talk about triangles, equilateral, isosceles, scalene. I hope I'll see you there, and please hit the like button. Bye.